You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys and gals, Nery here from Drake Wing Gaming. It's something to me on Twitter, the Gaming Drag. Today I'm coming back at you with a Let's Play episode of A Masquerade in the Woods. So y'all, before we jump into it, just wanted to let y'all know that our Patreon is now up. We've got bronze tier for $5, silver tier for $10, and gold tier for $15 each. And they all, and they all, uh, every tier comes with a permanent access to our exclusive community Discord server, and gold tier subscribers will get... Well, they're gonna get a very, a very nice customized um, avatar that they can use wherever they want. But anyway, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Yep. Okay. I wish I could say I had something to stop me from doing it. I've always envied those with faith. Those with the capacity to believe in something greater than themselves. Religion, spirituality, a higher calling, or just cause. Something to lend structure and context to the everyday. Something to compare and contrast their lives against. I wish I had that. Who am I kidding? I'm not looking for something to live for. I'm looking for something to die for. An excuse to not go out like a coward. People will die for their country, their beliefs, their way of life. Perhaps this cause could be something to die for. Finding those responsible for this whole mess. Those beasts with the faces of men, as Shepard called them. Shepard. I shake my head, shutting my eyes to rid myself of the thoughts of what happened. Carefully, I slip the piece of glass back in my pocket. At the same time, my paw strokes my neck, feeling the pulsating headache slowly worsening. I've made my decision. And I guess this is as good a place as any. I strain my ears for any strange noises one last time, before I take a deep breath. Hey! I'm not really expecting an answer, but even so, I lift my paws and cup them around my muzzle. Hey! Why am I here? I know you had something to do with this. I saw you at the hospital. Why'd you bring me here? I want to go back. Take me back. Answer me. Fucking answer me. I shout, standing up and kicking my foot at the soggy ground. Oh. Wait a second. What? No. He's not coming. I stumble back, tripping over my tail and landing in the wet moss. H who's there? He never does when you want him to. Well, you're, you're in my head. Only when he has his job to attend to. Get out of my head! Stop yelling. Someone's here. I said get out! I snap my head in the direction of the noise, breaking the silence. I call up behind the rock, carefully peeking over the edge into the darkness. Oh. A silhouette emerges among the trees. I hold my breath, straining my eyes. They limp through the moss, grunting with each step. Then look, then stop, looking from side to side, lifting their muzzle. They sound stuffed, and after a moment, they let out a frustrated grunt. Found you. My legs push me up and away even before I realize I'm doing it, and I run, hurtling through moss and mud, zigzagging boulders and trees. Behind me, more footsteps. They're getting louder. The ground becomes dry, firm. While difficult to see, it feels like an overgrown road, or at least what remains of it. At the same time, the sound of running water grows louder along with it. Then a low, metallic groan joins the forest choir, until a large building appears between the trees. Two houses, one on either side of the river, with the corridor connecting them, suspended above the water. It'll be pitch black in there. I can lose him inside. I take a deep breath and keep running, up against the decaying wooden wall, pushing my paws against it as I scurry along the exterior. I almost stumble as my foot hits the step, hits steps, but I regain my balance and spring up the stairs, paws still pressed to the, to the warped planks of the wall. An opening appears and I squeeze between the rotting wood to make it inside. My shoe snags on the crack and I trip, catching myself on knees and paws. The smell of rotting wood and peeling paint is overwhelming compared to the fresh air outside. I look back at the only the only source of light, the crack I just called just crawled through, letting in a gentle stream of moonlight from the trees above. Second, like y'all, it is water time. Maybe. Yes. Did 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 I lose them? Oh. Shit! 
I scrambled backwards into the dark, covering my mouth with a paw to silence my heavy breathing. I know you're in here. I carefully moved back, slowly sliding along the floor. I heard you in the woods. I could smell you. I've got your scent. They slowly turned their head, sniffing the air as they step inside. The scent of prey. The scent of fear. And the scent of blood. Fuck. My arm. I keep crawling back. Until I bump into something cold. Their head snaps towards me. There you are. I jump to my feet and run into the dark. My eyes slowly adjusting to the black environment, bumping into barrels along the way. But they adjust too slow, and as the creaking floor suddenly gives out, I fall. My chest hits the opposite side of the hole with a heavy thud. As soon as I'm able to gasp for air, I can't help but scream. Soon after, hurried footsteps down what sounds like a staircase, followed by laughter. Ha! <laughs> I got you! I fucking got you! You're so fucking stupid! The man kicks a chair out of the way, knocking it into a rickety table. Ah, oh, fuck! My nuts! You're gonna love my nuts. I try to stand up, and my left arm gives out, under, gives out under me when I'm pushing myself up. From the shadows into the moonlight, seeping through a glassless window, emerges my pursuer. You! The wolf from last night. George's house. The same one who stabbed Lucas. Did you miss me, raccoon? Because I sure as fuck missed you. His slim body leans down over me, his, his paw violently ripping his shirt open. You see what you fucking did to me? Even in the dim light, the crude tattoo is clearly visible, along with the severely bruised and infected scarring it caused. You know how bad this shit hurts? He grabs me by the hoodie, and in the dark, the glint of a blade becomes visible in his right paw. Where's my meth? He whispers through gritted teeth, most of them missing. I don't have it. Give it to me. I don't have it. Where is it? He releases his grip, and I fall back down the damp wooden floor. I raise my working arm to prevent my bruised cheek. The wolf begins pacing back and forth across the room, his breathing heavy and his paws shaking. I'm owed my compensation. He said I could have it. All of it. He suddenly stops, lifting the blade towards me. But then you, and, and that mutt, that fucking rat. He turns his head, spitting. I had to show up and ruin everything. But now I got you. You're right where I need you. He steps closer. Tell him you know where it is. What? Huh? And that you'll give it to him. I, I, I don't understand. Tell him you know where it is. I know where it is. He stops. If you just let me go, I'll give it to you. All of it. The wolf takes a step back, eyeing me up and down. Or you tell me where it is, and I'll hand you over to them dead and save you the torture. He swivels the blade in his paw. Didn't go too well last time, now did it. That didn't end well for your friend. For Georgie? Georgie was sloppy. He didn't deserve a spot at their fucking table. He lifts the knife to point it at himself. But I do. And you? For pointing it at me. You're my ticket. I'm no ticket. Oh yes you are. His paw fails to grab my fails to his paw falls to grab his crotch. And for what you did to me, I'll cut off your balls and then shove them down your throat till you choke. I crawl back. But, but we both stop as the knife in his paw begins to shimmer. Her head turns towards the wall where a light shines through the cracks from a distance. Faint footsteps become audible outside. He's here. What? Who? He turns back to me, taking a hurried step forward. I pull a piece of mirror from my pocket, holding it in front of me. Let me go or you'll never see that meth again. His expression turns to shock, but only for a moment. He was getting it from George. I know you were getting it from George. I lie in a hushed tone. He hesitates, rocking back and forth on his feet. Looks like you were right. Footsteps outside turn, turn from wet grass to wood. I dart my eyes between the cracks in the wall and the wolf. Until you find a new one, I'm your dealer. And if I die, it's gone. Before a door somewhere rattles. Truce? The canine lets out a frustrated huff. And I realize that right now my life lies in the head of an addict and the promise of a fix. Second now, water time.
What's he doing here? In the dark comes a man. Ooh. And behind him, a tall, brooding figure almost twice his height. Good evening to you, too. What the fuck is this? Why'd you bring the freak? I presume you, mean you must be Mr. Hansen. The man, a well-groomed hyena, extends his paw, tilting his head in a condescending gesture. Clark. It's a pleasure to finally meet you in person, Clark Hansen. Uh, excuse me. The wolf hesitantly shakes his paw, his grip loose, his eyes on the towering brute of a dog behind. My name is... The Red Prince. The hyena smiles, giving a quick nod. That's right. What do you want? The hyena lifts his paw to the table next to them. I was hoping we might be able to sit down for a chat. The wolf steps back, startled as the brute steps forward. He bends down, picking up the chair the wolf had kicked over earlier. Please, sit. Hansen slowly sits down and leans back, adjusting his groin in the process. The prince begins removing his coat, turning and handing it to the white dog. Did you come here alone? Yeah, I just... He trails off. Hmm? I mean, I just don't understand why, why here and not at the fu... Ah, yes, I'm sorry. Um, but our usual accommodations are unfortunately taken tonight. He offers Hansen a polite smile, raising his eyebrows in obvious false excitement. Another game. The prince leans back as he sits down, crossing one leg over the other and letting out a satisfied sigh. Now, do you know why I called you here? I can make a pretty good guess. And what would that guess be? I'm guessing it has something to do with Georgie. Correct, though more precisely, your task last night. Lahina picks his bag off the floor, placing it on the table. The wolf, however, has his eyes on the titan looming just out of reach of the light. As the prince opens the bag, he notices the wolf's gaze. Ah yes, Benny, my boy. Benny, the tall beast, breaks eye contact with the wolf, who in comparison looks short. Would you mind waiting outside? I believe Mr. Hansen would prefer a more private setting. Benny's eyes go back and forth between the prince and the wolf, but after a moment he nods, walking off into the shadows. Both canines sit in silence as the snow-colored Goliath's heavy footsteps echo off the walls, until the doors once again are, until the doors once again heard creaking on its hinges before shutting. The hyena offers the wolf a reassuring smile as he pulls a notebook from the bag and fishes a ballpoint pen out of his jacket. Right now, would you be so kind as to recount last night's events to the best of your recollection, please? His digits carefully flip through the pages. The fuck is this? Some sort of interrogation? The hyena immediately stops to meet his gaze. And Mr. Hansen, I can assure you, nothing could be further from the truth. I simply want to understand your view of the events. Second like, you know, water time. It's a standard procedure for all of our employees, really, simply to keep a written account of events. The wolf hesitantly nods, sighing. His leg bounces below the table, and his long, untrimmed claws scratch at his chest. Good. Now then, why don't we begin with the basics? He presses the back of the pen against the table, producing the ballpoint tip. How did you first come to meet Mr. Falk? The great canine swipes his paw under his nose, producing a stuffed sniffle. Meth. He deals meth. The prince nods, the pen in his paw scribbling across the page in his book. Dealt. Dealt. The scribbling stops, the hyena looks up, meeting the wolf's eyes with a saddened look. He leans forward, tilting his head ever so slightly to the side. He cl clasps his paws together. And may I add what a tragic loss it is to us all. My deepest condolences, Mr. Hansen. Hansen looks off to the side, pulling back. It was just a dealer. The prince leans back in his chair again, the sorrowful expression on his face gone just as quickly as it came. Of course. Was anyone aware of your contact with Mr. Falk? The wolf shakes his head. Friends, family, co-workers. Hansen leans forward, sighing in frustration. The prince simply looks looks back down at his notes, writing. And I understand you performed some services for him as well. Yeah, when I was broke and needed a fix. Could you describe those services, please? The wolf's head drops, idly fiddling with his claws. I need a fix, okay? I, I didn't I didn't have any cash. He suddenly sits up straight, throwing his arms out. Fine! Yeah, I fucked him, okay? That's what you wanted to hear? Before falling back with a heavy sigh, the prince readjusts in his seat, tilting his head pedagogically and clearing his throat, as if to make sure he, he has Mr. Hansen's attention. 
Were there any other services you performed for Mr. Falk? No. Why? The striped canine swivels the pin in the air. Something relating to his job. Hansen leans forward again, but this time further. Elbows on his knees. He rubs his face in his paws. Averting his gaze, he bites his cheek and scratches his neck. Yeah. Wanted to snatch some kid for him. Pony. The prince calmly notes it with, a, with his pen before turning the page. So, Mr. Falk was delegating his duties. The wolf shrugs, still avoiding eye contact. I don't know. Don't care. I just needed to hit, you know? I didn't... He didn't tell me what it was for. Just told me to grab the first horse I saw. The prince pauses. Alright, y'all, I'm gonna go ahead and pause it right there. This is a very, very heavy, heavy game. This is deals with some very fucking awful, awful material, y'all. So those of y'all who are sensitive to this shit, you know, I'm sure y'all realized a while ago this game is, uh, very, very, and uh, very gruesome and creepy and fucking... God, um, absolutely degenerate. That's right, yep, I would... I would, I would uh, definitely, um, I would definitely describe this group of fucking sadists as a bunch of degenerates. Anyway, y'all, thanks so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell. Have a super thanks or tip if you can, it always helps. Until the next video, I love you all. I'll see you next time. Don't forget to check out the Patreon, y'all. Bye-bye!